Good afternoon. Happy Friday, everybody. So this is an Echeveria that I just got from the hardware store. And I hope you can see, I have three in one, three giant ones in one. So um, I think I paid about $5 for this. I got it last night. I kind of forget because I kind of got a lot of plants. I have a bit of a problem. Um, but we are now going to separate these from each other to make individual plants. I'm going to take our Echeveria and separate it. So let's just pull it out. Okay. And you're just, whoa, look how quick that came off. That was ready. That was definitely ready. And I have a little rotten piece of flesh there that I'm gonna be throwing away. If you have any sort of rotting flesh, like any of the leaves, stems, whatever, all you're gonna be doing is attracting bugs and parasites. So make sure to dispose of those right away. Um, don't leave them sitting in your workstation or anything. Uh, I made that mistake and I ended up getting a shit ton of mealy bugs. And if you don't know what mealy bugs are, you can go ahead and Google them. They're a big pain in the booty and uh, they will basically infect all of your plants, your surrounding plants. So anywho, I've got another little leaf that I just plucked off. There's actually quite a few rotting leaves in here, so I'm just gonna get rid of those. Okay, and then you just continue to break it up. You are going to feel some of the roots breaking, and that's okay. You don't wanna pull off the roots, but separating them just like that is perfect. And now we're gonna go ahead and put these in their individual pots. So let's go ahead and actually plant one of these together. And the first thing you wanna do is do you notice how on here, some of the leaves are really, really low compared to the rest of it. Those we're just gonna pluck off. And if you pluck them correctly, you can actually propagate them, which is really cool. Uh, succulent propagation is when you take a leaf. So let's go ahead and take one of these off. I always start with the lowest one. So I've got the lowest one here, and I just kind of rock it back and forth, and then it breaks maybe do a little twist and see I got it exactly where I wanted to you want to basically get it where it comes from the very 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 tip of the stem if you do it and it breaks anywhere in the middle of this leaf you can't propagate it so and it just basically becomes trash at that point um when I just did the other two one of these little guys was stuck in the dirt or in the soil that was in the original container of this plant. And look how cute he is. Oh, so this is one that's already propagating and it's adorable. So eventually what will happen, this leaf now is the life source for the little bud and it already has amazing amount of roots. But you don't want to plant this yet. You wanna keep it above soil at all times. And eventually this leaf will start wilting and dying and drying out from the very, very tip of it all the way down to the end. And once it's all dead, then you go ahead and plant it together. So then you would plant the roots and the dead leaf together. Sometimes the dead leaves will fall off really easily and that's okay, as long as the roots stay attached. But um, I try to bury it all together so that way there's no chance of there being any any catastrophes. So anyway, that's a new baby. That's a new little baby plant. How cute is that? Okay, so back to what we were doing. So see, if I break off all of these, so let's rock them back and forth, boom, 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 give them a little twist. All right, and if I do this all according to plan, then I'll actually, I'm doing a pretty damn good job, I must say, because all of these I'm gonna be able to set, uh, propagate. Alright, and I think that's about all I want to take off of this one. 
The rest of them seem pretty solid. There's no, you know, real big gaps in between them. Um, it's a, creating a nice, pretty rosette, which is the goal with Echeverias. And so now we'll go ahead and plant that bad boy him back into his original pot because he's the longest of them all, the longest and the biggest of the three that we got. And I need a pot long enough to house him. Um, and he should actually grow really, really, really well, considering that I just removed the other two plants that were in here that were all jam packed into this one container. So now that I've freed up some of the space, so you just take your mix that you've put together or that you've purchased, take your little hand shovel. I put a couple scoops and then I drop the container in to the bucket. So that way it automatically is compacting it. And I don't have to sit there manually just doing this the whole time. I just drop, 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 drop. Cool, okay. So now let's see here. Let's actually I put too much soil in there. Drop, 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 drop. Ooh, I like that. That's the perfect height. You know, I actually learned if you take two pencils and you basically just crisscross them, that's about the height that you're gonna, oh, excuse me. <laughs> that's about the height that you're going to want your plant while you put the dirt in. So you could keep those pencils there. Sometimes they move on you, but whatever. Just give it a whirl. And then you just add your soil. Or you can at least measure it with the pencils, grab it with your hand, get those pencils out of there, and continue adding dirt. So basically, I put my fingers on either side of it like that, either side of the stem, and then you can add the dirt. This here. So I've got them all in. Obviously, once the plant is in the pot, you don't want to sit there bouncing it up and down inside the bucket and dropping it a bunch. So then part of the manual compacting comes in, which is obviously fine. But yeah, and you can see my two different sizes shovels. I know this looks, this little shovel looks absolutely ridiculous, especially compared to this guy. <laughs> But this is so amazing and so helpful. Think of how small some of these succulents are and think about having big tools working around them the whole time. It's just bound for a catastrophe. And um, yeah, I'd like to avoid those at all costs. So I take this little guy. I found this in a pack on Amazon. It came with a rake in case you have a succulent arrangement, you know, with um, some sand on the top. It keeps the... Every time you water it, obviously, as long as the succulent's living and not an artificial succulent, every time you water it, it's going to ruin the shape of the sand that you have on top. So then you can take the rake and just rake it out and make it look really nice and modern and chic. Um, and it came with, what else did it come with? I don't know. Anyway, you can find it on Amazon. I think it's like a five piece set. And um, the handle's wood, the shovel part is steel. And it's really, really, really useful. I've I never have not used it ever since I've gotten it. It's awesome. All right, and this is looking pretty solid. There we go. So now what I'm going to do with my three little newbies, uno, dos, y tres, I'm now going to put these under some water so that way it starts the growth of them really well. So I will put them under water. I just kind of circle it around. Do not put water directly over your succulent. Do you see all these crevices and grooves? Water is going to get trapped in there, stay in there, and it will end up rotting your succulent. So you do not ever want to just put water over it directly. You can spray it with water every once in a while if you feel like it needs it. I never really feel like it does, but I know that people do spray their succulent sometimes. Um, typically I only spray when I'm propagating, spray water over them, um, the little propagated leaves, but for these whole plants, 
you just put a little stream of water and just go around it like that. And then this is just an all-time glorious little invention called plant food. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. But this particular brand, the Cactus Plus 2-7-7, is to die for. I never not put plant food in my succulents when I water them. Every single time I add a few drops. I typically will add a few drops on the soil first and then put a little bit of water over it so that way it drains into the soil really nicely. And um, yeah, it just does wonders. You can use it obviously on cactuses. It's meant for cactuses, but cactuses and succulents, or cacti and succulents are pretty much one in one. Um, and there we go. That's how you separate a bunch of succulents and plant them in the character.